Hi, folks. I'm John Edwards, and this is Craig Spencer. We are Innovative Education Facilitators with the Durham District School Board, and welcome to this YouTube Live session. This is part of our bite-sized PD. These are new sessions that uh, introduce uh, professional development in about 15 minutes. And today on this YouTube Live broadcast, we're going to look at what's new in Google Classroom. Specifically, we're going to look at uh, some of the new features and cosmetic changes in Google Classroom that have occurred over the last couple of months. In particular, we're going to look at uh, uh, the features such as the new uh, classwork and people sections, as well as some of the uh, options that are available under the COG within Google Classroom, as well as uh, the grading uh, functions that have been streamlined within the interface. So let us begin by taking a look. All right, so here we are in a new Google Classroom interface. Um, first thing I just want to uh, direct your attention to is the fact that in this YouTube live session, you are certainly encouraged to participate in chat. Um, I'm just going to pull up a screen for you that will show what that uh, might look like. Uh, so you can see in here, this is actually a bite-sized PD that's scheduled to happen tomorrow. We have one happening tomorrow at 3 and 4 on the technology approval process. So you can see in this upcoming session that there is a chat that exists here. So this exists uh, within the current uh, session that you are uh, watching right now. So if you wish to participate in chat, um, you do need to sign into your, uh, your DDSB Google account. And when you do that, um, here's some instructions here that I'll briefly put up on the screen. What you want to do when you click on that little icon there, it may have a picture of yourself if you've added an avatar, you want to click on my channel, right? And after you click on my channel, it's going to ask you to create the channel. Don't worry, you're not actually creating a channel that doesn't already exist. You're basically just verifying the existence of your channel. That gives you the ability to, uh, to post comments, okay? It's a one-time procedure, and then you'll be able to get going and interact with us uh, within the broadcast. All right, so with that said, uh, we're looking here at the new um, Google Classroom interface. One of the things you'll see is that the top part here, this menu bar, looks a little bit different. We now have stream, classwork, and people. What we had prior to uh, September is we had uh, three sections called stream, classmates, and about. Okay, So stream remains, classmates, and about have been replaced with classwork and people. So let's see how this, uh, in fact, translates into some differences within the interface. First, under stream, uh, you'll see that uh, I can't, from here, uh, create assignments and announcements and posts. Okay, um, These simply don't exist within this current view. The old classroom uh, view would allow you to, uh, to post those individual um, assignments and announcements. And perhaps that's something that uh, you might want uh, to do. So if that's something that you'll want to do with this interface here where you were able to post announcements, assignments, and questions. What you can do is you can simply click on this question mark and you can remove the classwork page. That will create something that looks like this with just stream and people on the top menu bar. And from here, you can create the announcements, assignments, and questions. If you have an older Google Classroom that lacks this classwork button, what you can do is uh, similarly click on this question mark and you can add the classwork page, okay? So what does the classwork page do? As I click on the classwork page, uh, you'll see that um, I'm able to post assignments, questions, materials, and topics, right? You can see here I have two topics, test topic and topic number two, and I can post within those topics, assignments, questions, and materials, okay? You can see that uh, the individual posts here are collapsed, which allows one to see a little bit more uh, material on the, on the screen. I can click on the individual entries and see more information about it. I can see, for example, uh, the number of students that have turned in the assignment. Right, So I just have one student in this class, and that student has not turned in the assignment. I can see that uh, information here. I can also reorganize the content in here, so I can take this section and I can move it up. Right. I can also rearrange these topics. These could be units of study, for example. So I can click on move up here, and test topic now moves up to the top here of the screen. Right? So I can organize this classwork section in a way that actually reflects what I'm doing within my classroom. OK? Now, uh, one of the uh, new features here is this uh, notion here called materials. So if I click on material, 
what this would be is this might be, for example, a link to a website. It could be uh, perhaps a, a syllabus that you use within your course. It could be uh, in an English class, for example, an MLA guide, or it could be any materials that are associated with your units. So I'm going to put this my materials post one. I can easily, of course, add attachments to that, or I could add uh, a website link, right? So I could add a link to that. Uh, and of course, a description as well. I can decide to post that immediately, or just as before, I can schedule it or save it as a draft and get back to it. If I post it without a topic being assigned to it, it will simply go up to the top here. So this might be good for uh, materials that are used on a regular basis within your class that aren't tied to specific uh, topics or units of study here. I can easily, of course, take that materials post and I can assign it to a topic, okay? So what's good about this uh, topics feature here is that I'm able to have not just assignments and questions, but I'm able to have material, something that uh, might be links or resources um, that aren't tied to a specific assignment or a question directly, but are additional uh, links that somebody might click on to uh, to learn more uh, about, uh, about the materials that are being discussed within the context of your course. What we also have under this classwork section, which is new and improved, is we have a Google Calendar link. If I click on Google Calendar, this takes one directly to the Google Calendar that automatically gets created with each Google Classroom. You can see I have a number of classes here. And I, as you can probably tell, I'm a pretty busy guy here teaching a lot of classes, right? So I have these individual uh, classes associated with my Google Classroom. And you can see here that I have uh, the assignments automatically appear here, but I could add uh, additional posts uh, for, uh, for students and I can add that to the specific Google Classroom, okay? So that's new. This replaces the view where we had before a look at Google Calendar that just simply showed the assignments and their, their due dates created within Google Classroom. This shows you not just that, but anything else you add into Google Calendar. So it helps clear that look up. Uh, here is the class drive folder, so your Google Classroom uh, folder that gets associated uh, with your class and exists within your Google Drive, right? So that exists just as it did before. Uh, stream, you may wonder, well, what does Stream do now? Uh, well, Stream is basically just a chronological listing of your individual posts. You might have in Stream the option for students to be able to share content. And of course, you can share individual messages and announcements with your class here. If I take a look at what this how this would appear for the student in my class. You can see that I've enabled uh, the student to share something with the class and to add a comment. You can disable that, of course, if you want to as well, which we'll look at in a minute. You can also, under classwork, a student would be able to see this link here, view your work, and so they can see their work, they can see what's been assigned, what's been turned in, and they can filter that by uh, the assignments, return with grade or missing, okay? So this is the student view here. If I go back to the new class, I'm going to click on, uh, so there's classwork, which we've looked at. I'm going to click on uh, people. What's nice about the people view here is that teachers and students, this material exists within the same place. So you can see my students here. I can easily add co-teachers to the class in this section by typing in their, uh, their email. And for students, I can click on an individual student and I can remove them. Of course, the email link doesn't work as students do not have email. Uh, if I want to add students by a class code, which is the way that we encourage you to do, under the stream section, you'll see that there is this about link. As I click on the about link, there is the automatically generated class code, which I can make full screen. I can make that even larger full screen here. All right? And students would just simply enter that class code to register in your class. This also exists if I click on the cog here. Under the cog, you can see that there's the class code. And here, I can do the same thing by displaying that for students to easily be able to enter that. I can, of course, also uh, reset the code or disable it, right? Here, as I mentioned uh, in your stream, I've had it set here so students can post and comment. Um, early on in your class, you can, of course, change it so that only teachers can post or comment, or perhaps that's the setting that you want to keep within your Google Classroom, depending on uh, the specifics of your environment. Uh, under new class, I'm easily able to go in here and I'm able to update the name of the class, description, section, room, and subject. So I can add all those specifics to make this uh, suit my particulars. Just as before, I'm able to change the theme, upload photos, and the like to make this uh, unique to, uh, to my learning environment. 
Okay, so that's um, the main features existing here. Uh, two more things to look at before we uh, look quickly at grading in the new interface is if I click on this menu bar here, you can see that under settings, I have the same options before of receiving notifications, but I'm also able to look at class notifications and turn email and mobile notifications on or off for the specific classes that I'm uh, that I'm teaching or enrolled in. So I have those options here so I can fine tune those settings. If I go to my classes and I have a nice template here for this new class I've created, I can also copy that class and recreate it uh, with the topics and classwork without, of course, the roster of students and the specific announcements. I could even take that class and I can archive it, all right? So it doesn't appear on this home screen. I can rearrange this as well to make it uh, uh, a little bit more suitable for my uh, particular needs, okay? Uh, final thing to look at um, is the grading functionality. So I'm just going to open up a, uh, a class where I already have some content. In this section here, you can see that um, I have an assignment that I've used for demonstration purposes before, my favorite animal. I'm going to click on that. Here I have some students in the class, uh, certainly a motley crew of students here. I'm going to click on Craig Spencer. Um, so I'm going to click on his assignment. Here, you can see that this is a new interface. You can see there's a lot of, of information that's available here, this new sidebar, which is really helpful, right? So I can do what I would normally do in an assignment here. I can provide um, comments. I can provide uh, suggestions, right? So I can both edit and I can suggest to provide feedback directly in the document. Um, I can also very easily navigate between my students, Craig Spencer, and I can go directly to uh, to Jeff Raymer. This is actually Jeff Raymer, not Fabio. I can go to Jeff Raymer's document as well, and I can provide uh, some comments, some descriptive feedback, and a grade for him. So if I go back to Craig here, um, I can add the grade directly in here. I can add private comments, right? And I also have this new feature here called a comment bank. If I click on the comment bank, you can see I've added a couple of comments here. I can add a new comment so it becomes part of that bank, right? Or I can take um, a particular bit of text and let's say I want to add a comment to that. I will highlight that, click on the plus. I can not only just add a comment here, but I can also click on the hashtag and I can add one of my comments from the comment bank. All right, so I can add, please elaborate here. With any of my comments that I have, I can click on these three dots for more options and I can add that to the comment bank. If I find something that I want to use within that comment bank, um, that's something I'm able to do. And I can return the assignments and do all that sort of functionality directly within this interface. So I could add a grade for Craig, and then I can return that to him. So this all can happen directly within this interface. So that makes uh, grading the workflow a lot easier. Right. So here again, uh, just uh, some final thoughts. So under the new class, um, I mentioned this uh, little um, question mark here that you can click on for removing or adding the class to the classwork page. There's also a nice feature in here, uh, what's new. So this outlines a lot of the new material in Google Classroom, so you can sort of track some of the changes. And there might be some issues here that I didn't address, but it's fairly comprehensive in terms of what's available within Google Classroom. So, so that essentially uh, concludes what um, we want to look at as far as this bite-sized PD is concerned with an overview of the new features from August and September of this year for Google Classroom. If you have any questions, you can email any of the Innovative Education Facilitators or email our general inbox directly. It's innovative.education at ddsb.ca. And I hope you have enjoyed this bite-sized PD. Thank you.